Mary Ellen Ramage, the borough manager in Etna, and welcome to our rain garden installation. Hi, my name is Jessica Spraycar. I'm the manager of the Sustainable Lands Program, which is organized by the Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. The Sustainable Lands Program is organized through five partnerships in the state. We're here in the Southwestern Pennsylvania Partnership, which is an organization of nonprofits, local government, and businesses that come together to educate municipal officials, uh, homeowners, and other people interested in maintaining their landscapes in a sustainable way. So we're here today to learn about rain gardens. Behind me, you will see a finished rain garden. So through the process of this video, you'll see from start to finish what it takes to install and maintain a rain garden. Hello, I'm Dan Eichenlaub. I'm a landscape contractor in southwestern Pennsylvania, and I really enjoyed coming to this uh, rain garden uh, presentation today. This is an ever-evolving area, and so we're always trying to learn uh, better techniques or uh, learn what's working and not working in this area. Uh, it's really exciting today to be with a group of people looking to move um, this water uh, control and quality uh, forward for our regions. I want to talk briefly about why this is so important to our community. It's very important to us to try to do what we can to do our part. Green infrastructure is one of, an, is one of many ways to address source control and this is just absolutely fabulous addition to our community. Aesthetically, it brings air quality improvements. It's just a win-win for everybody and we're very happy to be here and very happy to be part of this program.
I'm Sandy Feather. I'm the commercial horticulture educator with Penn State Cooperative Extension in Allegheny County. And I want to talk a little bit about the plants that were chosen for the rain garden at the Aetna Borough Building. Um, when you're planting a rain garden, uh, there are several depths, of course, in the middle of the garden. You have to choose plants that are really going to tolerate uh, being saturated some of the time, whereas up on the margins, you can plant things that are uh, preferred a little bit drier. Uh, some of the great plants that were selected for this rain garden include the Sweet Bay Magnolia, uh, which is a native species of magnolia. It's more common in the southern United States, but it's certainly uh, perfectly winter hardy for us up north. It, another common name for it is the Swamp Magnolia, so that gives you a little indication of how tolerant it is of excessive water. And it's one of the plants that was chosen to plant down in the deeper part of this rain garden. Uh, it blooms uh, a little bit later than the saucer and star magnolias, so the flowers don't get spoiled by frost. And it almost always produces fruits that birds find attractive. It'll grow 15 to 20 feet tall with a similar spread. And uh, it's a lovely little tree that'll spit very fragrant flowers out right, almost right up until frost. We also have Itea virginica, also known as Virginia sweet spire, and it's a shrub that'll grow between three and five feet tall. It blooms in June with spikes of fragrant white flowers, and they are attractive to a lot of pollinators, your, your butterflies, honeybees, uh, native species of bees, bumblebees, and again, it will also tolerate um, periodically being saturated and then uh, perhaps uh, drier when we're having a, a hot dry spell in the summertime, and it's perfectly happy in, in both of those conditions. Superb fall color on it. It's one of the best uh, shrubs for your garden for good fall color. Uh, the next plant I want to talk about is a nice evergreen accent in the rain garden. It is the inkberry holly. Uh, it'll grow probably three to five feet tall depending on the cultivar. Uh, it has, uh, it's a broadleafed evergreen, not a needled evergreen. And uh, it doesn't get the red berries on it that make other hollies so attractive for us, but it's one of the only evergreen plants that tolerates periodic flooding. Most evergreens really require good drainage, so this is the exception. Another nice thing about it is deer don't prefer it, so it, if you live where you have a large deer population, this is something you can plant and not have to worry about them taking to the ground every winter. Um, we also have some really nice herbaceous perennials, uh, things like uh, cardinal flower, which is again a native species. I typically see it growing along the shores of rivers and streams, again in a situation where it's subjected to periodic flooding. Uh, it really does prefer constant moisture. Uh, so. Uh, it really does prefer constant moisture, so it's not going to be a good uh, plant selection for a drier site, uh, but it would be perfect for a rain garden. Uh, some other things, the uh, uh, royal fern is another species. That's a, a very large fern, easily can grow five feet tall, and it actually grows on the rocky shores of the Yakigani River, where again it is subjected to periodic flooding. It doesn't really like a really dry situation, but it's a good rain garden plant. We also have um, mountain mint, which is a wonderful pollinator plant. All kinds of butterflies and bees will flock to this, and it's not quite as uh, invasive. Invasive isn't the word. It is not quite as aggressive as other mints that you may have grown in your herb garden. But it will also tolerate this um, periodic flooding situation. We also have blue flag iris, which is going to be a spring bloomer. And again, it actually grows in standing water and in kind of swampy areas. So again, it's another great rain garden plant. Sneezeweed is uh, another good one. Uh, there's a lot of different species. The straight species will get maybe six feet tall, so it's a pretty big plant. But some of the newer cultivars of sneezeweed will only get 12 to 15 inches uh, tall. And this is typically one that we see in moist meadow conditions, a uh, place like Jennings Prairie up in Butler County. There's a lot of sneezeweed that, that grows natively up there. The threadleaf blue star is another great plant, uh, probably more up on the berm of this garden. Uh, it would not want to be in standing water for any great length of time, but it's going to bloom uh, late May into June with sky blue flowers, again, that are attractive to a variety of pollinators.
Little Joe pieweed is another one. Pieweed is one that you'll find in these moist meadow situations and is typically more common where it stays moist all the time. The straight species of Joe pieweed can get seven or eight feet tall. Little Joe is going to top out around four feet, so it's certainly going to fit into uh, more people's landscapes than the straight species. Well, rain garden plants are, are need to be able to tolerate uh, times of periodic flooding as well as times when it's going to be drier for them. And fortunately, a lot of our native plants are well suited to that situation, uh, particularly if you think about things that you find in moist meadows, along rivers and streams, and even uh, bodies of water like Lake Arthur. Uh, the plants that grow along those margins have to tolerate that periodic flooding situation as well as drier times of the year. My name is Jim Hart. I'm a student at the Bidwell Training Center uh, Horticulture Technology Program, and I'm attending today's workshop uh, basically, to, basically uh, to get a better understanding of how to design, install, and maintain the uh, rain garden systems that are becoming more and more popular uh, around the area. Rayborn. I have my own landscape design business and I have recently installed or recently designed a rain garden bioswale area and uh, there was a lot of information on the internet that I was able to teach myself but other than that I had a great had great difficulty of finding anybody to advise me. Um, I did end up finding people at Westmoreland County Conservation District that could give me lots of mentoring, which I was very grateful for. But I'm always looking for education in other ways to help me in my, in my business and doing these uh, rain gardens. My name is Sarah Madden. I work for the Nine Mile Run Watershed Association. I'm a design manager for their Stormworks program. Um, so as you can see, uh, we just started doing the initial kind of site analysis, um, looking at the downspouts and how much water is coming off of the roofs. Um, and two of the downspouts are tied into the rain garden currently um, and they're managing a little under 500 square feet of roof and draining into the rain garden. So about a quarter of this roof is managed in a rain garden. We hope to tie some more in uh, later but currently two downspouts are tied into the garden. We also installed the garden um, with an overflow, so the garden overflows 
uh, when it reaches capacity. It's likely that it won't overflow all that often, but in some severe rain events it may. Um, and then we've also installed behind you here um, a smaller rain garden. We identified um, during the site visit during a rain event that there's a fair amount of sheet flow coming off of this pavement um, that eventually ends up in the catch basin. Um, so we thought we'd intercept that with a small, uh, a small little depression on the edge of it. So we have another rain garden that captures some sheet flow. Um, currently the garden is being watered. Um, it's important to water the garden during establishment. Um, so probably till the, end of the, till the end of the fall, this garden will need to be watered a few times a week. Um, but we're going to give Aetna a maintenance um, plan so they understand how to maintain the garden for the next few years. Um, so it can continue to be a productive and beautiful garden for the borough. So now you know what it takes to install and maintain a rain garden. I hope you'll consider installing one in your yard or in the yard of your customers. Uh, for more information, please visit the following websites where you'll learn more about rain gardens and what it takes to keep them looking nice throughout the years. Thanks for joining us. Bye.